Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how I would go about retouching a portrait using the effects module of On One Photo Raw 2018. Now, you may remember in a previous video, I covered the skin retouching panel that is found in the develop module. My recommendation to you is that you forego that panel and instead use the skin retouching filter that is found in the effects module. At first glance, the panel in the develop module and the filter in the effects module look to be identical, but I think you'll find that the filter has some more advanced tools, that being masking and targeted adjustments, which will help you better process skin in a portrait. Additionally, when you're in the effects module, you could also add dynamic contrast and or sharpening to sharpen the skin, lips, and eyes of your subject. So it's more convenient to do everything in the effects module. This is an image that I downloaded from Adobe Stock, and I think it would be a pretty typical image that most of us would process in on one. She's a beautiful young lady. She has a couple little pimples you might want to cover up and maybe just smooth the skin a little bit, and it's very easy to do in the effects module. Now, what I would do, I would start off with the retouch brush, and you can access the retouch brush when you're in the effects module, as I am now. Now, you may remember we covered the retouch brush in a previous video, it's over here in the left hand tool palette. We'll just click on it or you can hit R. That's the keyboard shortcut for retouch brush. And across the top we have some brush attributes. For skin, I like the feathering usually around 30 to 50. It works well for me. Uh, the size you could change with your uh, bracket keys on your keyboard. The right bracket key makes the brush larger, the left bracket key makes the brush smaller and we covered this you could hover over the actual word size and it turns into a little scrubby slider and you could drag right or left to adjust the size of the brush so there's numerous ways you could change the size of the brush and we did cover that before we're going to keep feathering at 30 and opacity at 100 and then simply all you need to do is make your brush slightly bigger than the blemish you want to remove and then just click and you could just paint as well you don't have to just click once you could actually uh, you know paint a line if you need to In this case here she just has some very very minor minor blemishes and for the sake of this video I'm not going to go tediously through every little blemish on her on her face or shoulders I'm just going to take out a couple to give you an idea how easy it is to do this with the retouch brush now when you're done with it, I would say that this is done. Maybe I'll just take this one out right here. Then I'd say this is done. Just go over back to your tool, pal tool palette and click on View. So you're back in View mode. You could also hit the Z as in Zebra key on your keyboard and you'll return to View mode. Now we're ready, ready to add some filters. And I suggest the first filter you use is the Skin Retouching Filter. And again, as you look at it, it you can see it seems to be identical to the panel that's found in the Develop module. And I'll just go over it real quick, and I'm going to put the link to the video where I covered Skin Retouching in the Develop module in the description below this video. Um, in that video, I go over in detail how to use the panel. And again, this filter works very much the same way. Um, I'm going to be a little quicker here. We have these uh, styles going across the top. We have subtle, we have moderate, and you can see as I click on them, you'll see the skin kind of blur. We have strong. I'm going to do, do a before and after. So you can see there's before, there's after, there's before, there's after. So you could see it's considerably blurring the skin. We'll go to this drop down and we have auto skin smoother. Then we have uh, moderate, which we already touched upon, natural. Then we have shine reducer then we have the strong which we have on the image right now and then we have subtle which was the first style we we uh, mentioned now you can if you find that you're using the same 
type of skin smoothing, skin retouching on every image. You could create your own style by, you know, when you're satisfied with your settings, go to save style and save it as a new style. And then you're able to delete any styles that you previously saved. Now, again, for this image, I think we're going to, we're going to bring this first three down. And again, I'm going to link to that other video where I cover the skin retouching panel which has the same sliders and I go into much more detail what each slider does in that video. But you're going to bring blemishes up first and what this will do anything that is like redder or browner than her skin in this case it will kind of take that color away. In this case she doesn't really have a lot of uh, like freckles or, or blemishes or anything and to tell you the truth, if you're, I would strongly suggest if your model or subject has freckles, you don't want to obliterate those because that's part of their personality. And um, I would try to leave those as much as possible. So we're going to bring it up just to try to get any uh, the blem actual blemishes smoothed out. And as I said, most of the ones that were slightly larger we already took care of with the, um, with the retouch brush. So then we're going to smooth, we're going to move it to the right. And you can see as I move it to the right, it will increasingly kind of blur and smooth their skin. And when you go too far to the right, it starts looking a little fake. So you just want to do it enough where you could still see pores, but you're not really seeing any maybe um, scars from acne or chicken pox or anything like that. Then you want to bring shine up to kind of eliminate any shine. She has a bit of shine in here. Not a lot. Just want to bring it up till it kind of smooths that out. Be right in there. Then evenness will help if when you move the first three sliders, if you made it kind of blotchy looking, if you move the evenness slider to the right, it'll tend to smooth everything together. You can see how that's doing it nicely on her skin. I'm going to give you a before and an after. And a before and an after. And it kind of Gave her a more pink hue to her skin as well. Now, we could target her skin directly with this little eyedropper here by clicking on the eyedropper and click on her face somewhere, like right there. And you'll see that it will better apply these adjustments just to her skin. And that comes in very handy because, let's face it, not everyone has the same color skin, right? So you're going to want to target your adjustment to their skin. Also, this range slider helps you uh, limit where these adjustments are going. In this case, as I go on and off, you can see it's blurring her hair as well because her hair is kind of, you know, in the same tonal range as her skin. So it's hitting the hair a little bit too. So maybe if we move this range slider around, we could get it more limited to just her face. If it's all the way to the left, you won't be affecting everything. So there's before and there's after. If it's all the way to the right, you're going to get full adjustments on everything. There's before, there's after. So obviously, we want it somewhere more towards the left. And you can see when I click on the slider, the image turns into this odd kind of inverted image. And basically what it is, wherever it's brighter, that is where the adjustments are going to be had. So right now it's on her cheeks, the uh, bridge of her nose, the uh, top of her middle of her forehead, the, um, under her uh, lip a little bit, and it is affecting her hair out in here a little bit. But that seems to be about the best we could do. And that is pretty good right there. I'd say that that... Um, you know, smoothed her skin out nicely. It didn't really change who she is. Um, it, she looks nice. So I think that looked pretty good. Now, I did mention that the filter in the effects module has more powerful tools overall than the panel, the skin retouching panel that's in the develop module. And specifically, a couple things. First, we have masking. If we click on the little mask, I could limit this so it's just affecting her skin because we don't want to smooth out her eyes, her eyebrows, her hair, her clothes. So we want all that, her lips, we want all that to be very sharp. Every The skin, though, we need to be smooth. So we could open up the 
um, masking area here so we have all our mask tools and by default we're in paint out mode and we turned on the brush so we could paint out any of the adjustment on her hair and that's probably in and her lips and that's probably the way I'm going to do it conversely you if you wish if you'd rather paint in the adjustment you could invert the mask by clicking here and you're going to see when I invert the mask the effect will be removed so you'll see that her face or the um, smoothness on her face will go away. So we're back to where we started. Now I could paint in the adjust adjustment on her face. And that's another way you could do it. That way you could avoid going to her eyes, her eyebrows, things like that. So you're going to do whichever is easiest for you for your specific image. In this case, since most of her skin is be more of her skin is being shown than let's say her hair and her clothes and her lips and stuff. I think it's easier if I keep that mask white so the effect is being applied everywhere, then I just get a brush that is large enough and use paint out mode when I look at the brush attributes to paint it away. And then feathering at 100, opacity 100 will work well. I'm not going to use the, I call it magic brush, a perfect brush, I believe it's called. I have a mental block when it comes to that brush. You know, from previous episodes, I always called it magic brush, but it should be called perfect brush. So I'm just going to quickly do this and just paint on her hair to paint away that smoothness that the actual filter is applying so it doesn't affect her hair at all. I'm sure I'm missing a lot of spots, and we'll fix that in a minute. We're going to paint it away on her clothes because we want her clothes sharp or as sharp as possible like this. And then we want to paint it away on her eyes and get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key. We don't want the smoothness to affect her eyes or eyelashes. We don't want it to affect her lips. So I'm going to paint it out there. And that looks good. And we're going to paint it out on her eyebrows like that. Now we could look at the mask itself by clicking on this little icon that's a little rectangle with a circle in the middle and we'll actually see our mask and you can see it's a little comical. But we could come in here and then kind of hit places that we think we missed. Now if you're not getting a black and white mask like this you would go up to the top mask menu, go to view mode, you might have red overlay. And that helps too. Whichever one works best for you, it doesn't matter. We could use either. This way, in the red overlay, I could actually see our young lady under the mask and might better help me do it. Now, if I paint, like I see how I got a chunk of her ear here, you could go up here and go to paint in mode, but a faster way is just to hold the Alt or Option key in. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac, and you'll see that the brush has a minus in it now because we're in paint out mode. As soon as I press in, press in the alt or option key, it gets a plus sign on it. So I'm in paint in mode. So I'm going to paint in the adjustment on her ear where I, where I um, over brushed a second ago. So we could just quickly, and then when we let go of that alt or option key, we're back into paint out mode. So we could come in here real quickly and do this. So for the sake of this demonstration, I'd say this is good enough. If you wanted to ever paint a straight line, if I haven't shown this in the past, just click in one spot once, then go to the opposite end, hold the shift key in, and click one time again, and you'll paint a perfectly straight line. I oh, will do that real quick. So anyway, I think for this demonstration, we're pretty much done. So we're going to turn off the mask preview by clicking on this little rectangle with circle in the, minute, the middle again. So we've actually now only applied our skin retouching to her actual skin. Now to continue on, I'm done with this panel. I should mention though that if you don't like using a mask, you may click on this little gear and try to do these targeted adjustments on one calls it apply to and you could apply it to wherever you click with the eyedropper, but that's very similar to the skin color eyedropper down here. So I'm not sure 
that that would help. Excuse my phone, I apologize. So then, um, so if that works, fine. I don't think blending options are an option for this image here. So we're done with the skin retouching panel, but I still would like to sharpen up her eyes, her lips, and her hair. Now you could do a couple different filters, whichever one you're more comfortable using. You could use the sharpening uh, filter, or you, could, you could, or you could use the dynamic contrast filter. In this case, I think I want to use dynamic contrast. And you could see as soon as I applied it, it sharpened her skin and everything. Of course, we don't want that. So I'll go before and after. And you could see it just kind of undid what we did with our um, skin retouching filter. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to apply a mask to this. Now, a fast way to do it is we already applied a mask to the skin retouching filter where I have the mask um, applied only to her skin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that. So just click on the little copy um, command right there. Now I copied that mask to the clipboard. Go up to dynamic contrast, open up the mask properties by clicking on that little mask right there, and click paste. Now the problem is it's the wrong way. The mask is letting the dynamic contrast adjustment go on her skin. We want it backwards. We don't want it on her skin. We want it on her hair, her eyebrows, her eyes, and her lips. So after we copied it and pasted it, we're just going to invert it. Just like that. And you could see how now, as I turn this off and on, there's off and on, off and on. You could see her lips, her hair. It's only affecting her lips, her hair, her eyes, her clothes to a limited effect. But it's not affecting the skin, which we already took care of. So those two filters are what I would use. Instead of dynamic, excuse me, instead of dynamic contrast, you may prefer to use a sharpening uh, filter. Whichever is easiest for you, they both work fine. I'm going to give you a before and after of the entire image. There's before and there's after. So there's before and there's after. So I think you'll see that the skin retouching tool in the effects module is really, I think, more powerful because of the masking option you're allowed in this uh, module. And also because you're already in the module, it's very easy to go to dynamic contrast or sharpening and sharpen the hair lips eyes and eyebrows and clothes and then you could copy and invert the mask copy paste and invert the mask that you already created for skin retouching for dynamic contrast so it makes i believe the skin retouching process much better for on one where i wasn't a big fan of the skin retouching process in the develop module I think it's much better and more effective in the effects module, and I think you'll find the same thing. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.